Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to the College Express YouTube channel. My name is Mackenzie. I'm one of the College Express team members. I'm joined today by Kim Lifton, president and co-founder of Wild Writing Workshop. Today, she will be providing us with answers to some of the questions you guys asked on writing your college essay. So welcome, Kim. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. So how long have you um, been working with Wild Writing Workshop? Well, my business partner, Susan Napo, and I got together for this particular project. It started as a project uh, 11 years ago, 2009, actually. So we've been around a while. And we started by thinking it was going to be a wild writing workshop. And we were going to help kids with their college essays and be the all-purpose writing company. And it's evolved and changed over the years. But one thing that hasn't changed is the process that we developed for teaching students how to write the college essay. And it's, we've been virtual, I think since probably eight years, we've been virtual. So we're well, you know, it's everything we do is online. So when the pandemic hit, nothing changed for us, which was, a, it was a beautiful thing because we already know how to do it. And we just, we have writing coaches who live in different parts of the country who work with students using our step-by-step -step online process and guide the students through it. It's very process-based, right? There's a process, we give you a schedule and it takes, and I know some of your questions are specific to this, so I'll, I'll get to that later, but it's very, we make it very easy to do and we help the students to understand what the prompt is, to brainstorm ideas, to come up with something that the student is comfortable with and confident with, and to write something that's meaningful and reflective and answers the prompt every time. So we have bite-sized chunks of information, instructions, a schedule, and a plan for getting it done. And sometimes students start writing their college essays and think, they're just going to sit down over a weekend and just boom, 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 crank those babies out because that's what you're used to. And that's what you do for English class or science class or anything. And that just doesn't work. It creates angst. It makes students so stressed out at a time when they're already nervous, already worried. And so we developed a process that helps take that anxiety out of the process for as much as you, that's possible during an anxious time in students' lives. And we help students in a very calming way without being too involved in the content of the work and more involved in how to do it in a way that helps the student express themselves and answer the question. Yeah, I wish you guys were, or I wish I knew about you when I was writing my college essay, actually, you guys were around. Um, I just wasn't aware of resources. So this is amazing. Because I remember when I was writing my essay, you know, I did exactly what you just said. I tried to get it done within like a week or so. And I always felt like I needed to just, you know, write about like the biggest thing that's impacted my life and like condense that into like what a page. Um, so I really didn't have a lot of guidance for my essay writing. So that's awesome that you guys have put this group together. It's coming. Yeah, and, and if you don't mind, I wanted to like just kind of add to what you said. So what you thought was that you needed to write something huge, which makes sense because there's a lot of information online and that comes from your teachers at school and from well-meaning adults who want to help because they love you. And it's natural to think, oh, this is the biggest thing in my life. This is something that matters, so I'm going to go, go somewhere big. But that's a mistake because colleges aren't looking for big. Colleges are looking at your essay to find out what you're made of, how you think. It's up here. And you can illustrate that in a story that expresses who you are. And if it was something big, it can be something big, but it doesn't need to be. And that's a mistake. So you can have a student who wants to illustrate. You start, 
I'm going to get to that. You can go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that kind of ties in with our first question, which is what are some of the best and worst topics for college essays? I know that's kind of like a general question, kind of hard to answer because everyone's very different. It's not, you know, just cut and dry. Um, but what would you say, maybe focusing more on like the worst, just because I think that's a good place to start. What would you say something people shouldn't write about? Well, I wouldn't. That's why I love this question. <laughs> and it's, it's not a hard, no question is hard to answer. And thank you so much for asking that. And it is a question I do a monthly pre-class for students. And I get that question. Let's say I'll have 150 people sign up and I got some iteration of that question probably 50, 50 times out of 150 students. And the questions are focused on what's a good topic, what's a bad topic? How can I write about something big? And what, do, what, what is the best essay that an admissions person wants to read? So the answer is for both of these, it's two questions, what's the worst, what's the best? And the answer is the best topic is answering the prompt. The worst topic is not answering the prompt. And the biggest mistake that students make is not answering the question. And in our method, the first thing we do is called understand the prompt. That's step one of our process. And we make sure that every student understands what the prompt is asking before we brainstorm ideas, before we think about topics. So worst is something that doesn't share something new with admissions people that they don't know about you. Worst is writing about something that's really, really negative and doesn't share something positive about you. Worst is not taking the essay as an opportunity that it's meant to be, which is to share something meaningful about yourself with a story that is reflective, answers the prompt, and you know, talks about something that's important to you, the student. So the best topic does, does exactly that, answers the prompt, shares something meaningful about the author, and share something with colleges that they wouldn't know from the rest of the application essay. They're not looking to read generic stories about sports. If you're on the swim team for four years at your school, it's likely that that might be a comfortable place for you to brainstorm ideas, to answer a prompt. It doesn't matter. So you can write about anything you want as long as you do the job. And what admissions people want is to know who you are and how you think. And so they ask questions outside of the rest of the application so then they can put this picture of who you are to enhance what they already have. They want to know something else about you. They want to know how you think. They want to know if you're a good fit for this particular college. Can you write well enough? It's as much a thinking task as it is um, a writing task. And so the, they're not measuring. Students often think that you have to use a thesaurus or be like this better writer than you are. And you have to be the writer you are, use the words that you already know, put the thesaurus aside, and just focus on understanding the prompt and answering the question. And yeah. most students haven't been taught how to do that. So it's a different kind of writing. Does that answer your question? Do you want to it do does, that? It does, yeah. You know, I know there's not uh, there's not going to be a list of these are the topics you should talk about and these are the topics you shouldn't, because this is right. the chance for students to show their personality, show who they are. Like, I mean, when they're filling out their information about themselves, they don't really get a chance to do that. So the essay is a very big part in showing the school right. who you are. So um, you're not so going to want to re yeah you're not going to want to rehash. You're, you're not going to want to do a list of all your activities. It's a wasted opportunity to do that because you've already shared that with them somewhere else in your application. And this so is a what place- What would you say to the student that comes to you with the topics? I know this is a big topic for maybe just athletes or like people who are doing clubs. 
and they say, I, I know some people talk about, oh, I had this really great game or like, I want to talk about this time that I did this during one of my, the playoff game, the championship game, and I scored this goal. Like, how do they tie that topic into an essay that colleges can understand who they are? Okay. Because that seems so, like it's just about. Yeah. Start. Well, we do. No, we get students who start with that. But we don't start there. Our process starts with, here's the prompt. And we ask the students, we have questions we ask them. And it starts with, what is it that you want colleges to know about you outside of your application, outside of your, beyond your, your grades and, and a normal, in the past, it would be your, your uh, test scores. We don't know where that's going to be anymore. But beyond what they already know, which would be your grades, test scores if you have them, or if the school requires them, um, and everything else, all your activities, everything. So if the student, after all that, says, it, we would focus on what it is the student wants to know. So if the student wants to write about, it's a football player and wants to write about um, kicking, what is it in football? A touchdown? Scoring, scoring, yeah. <laughs> I meant like when you're the kicker and you're punting. That's what I was going to say. Oh, okay, so yeah. Score. So it's a tied game and you score the winning touchdown. And you come to me and say, I want to write about that. That was like the biggest moment in my life. And it answers this prompt. And what I would say is, okay, I wouldn't say you can't write about that because the topic is not as important as the student and what the student wants to share about themselves. So we would say that would be a trait. What is the trait that made you able to do that? Like, what is it you want to share with colleges that was so important? And we would take that because I would start where the student is because I don't want to put ideas in the student's head. And we would talk about that. And the student would tell me what the traits are. So I already know what the traits are. So what do you want colleges to know through the story? And we would brainstorm. And then if there's nothing there, except I won a game, then the student will come to the own um, answer that, oh, that's not a good college essay. So it's a story that you can tell your child one day, oh my God, this was the coolest thing. I, I scored the winning touchdown. But we would try to find out what it is that the student wants to tell them. So did, were you always an athlete? How hard did you have to work to become as good as you are? What did it feel like? Did you, was this the first time you ever won anything in your life? So does this show it? Does this show hard work and determination? And then I would ask that student, can you give me another time when your hard work paid off? And we would have three or four ideas. And maybe they all took place during football. Or maybe one of them took place while you were on a walk with your grandma and grandma fell and you grabbed her and took her to the hospital. And it was the first time in your life you ever did anything nice for someone else. And you worked really hard and you're kind and you're compassionate, who knows where it will go. But we start where the student is and then we have a conversation and we make sure that there's a reason for everything from the beginning of the process to the end. So you start at a football game, you start with scoring the final touchdown and you end up in the same place. What is the trait that you want colleges to know about you? What is it you want them to know that they don't already know? Do you want them to know that you won a football game? And it's pretty likely that the person's gonna say, well, they, they probably can already know that. They know I play football. They know that I'm the quarterback. They're gonna assume that at some point I scored a winning touchdown. What else do I want them to know? And we would just talk about that and something would emerge. So okay. this, this happens all the time and that's okay. It's part of the process of discovery. So the essay isn't the place to process everything about yourself, but it's a place to, to talk about what's meaningful to you and to share who you are. And if it's that I'm a hard worker and being a hard worker made me a really good football player, then being a hard worker is also gonna make you um, improve your math score over four years when it was really hard for you. And that same thing is going to help you tutor a kid. And that same thing is going to help you be a really good babysitter 
or learn how to mow the lawn when it was really hard. So that mundane story is going to be just as good. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I know you've talked a lot about um, the process that you have the kids go through when they come to you. And I know that's a question that students ask um, a lot of times is how much time should I be spending on this essay, brainstorming, writing, editing? Um, so for your process, how long do you usually work with the student? And do you guys start, I mean, you say you start with the brainstorming, but do you follow them all the way through? Do you guys mm -hmm. um, edit the essay with them and then like come to the final paper? So I'll tell, I'll tell you how it works. And we actually don't start with brainstorming. Okay. So if that's what you heard, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll, it's okay. We start with- no, I think that's with, just what I, what I assumed. This, well, people do start with brainstorming. And when you start with brainstorming, you're already in the middle of the process. So if you start with, oh, let's just talk about ideas, you haven't really thought about what's most important in a college essay. So our process starts with understand the prompt. So we use the Common App as the guide to learn. We start with the learning essay, which we call the personal statement. And the Common App is the most you know, most, a lot of colleges that our students apply to, they use that. So we start with that or some version of it. So it could be a UC prompt or it could be a, we, but mostly we start with the common app as long as, because there's always somebody whose school accepts the common app. And that's a personal statement. And there are seven prompts on the common app that the students can pick. And so we start with understand the prompt step one. And we have the students do some free work and some questions that they answer. We do a lot of free writing in our process. So we make sure that they under that they, they write down the prompt and we make sure that they understand what colleges are asking them before we even get to writing down ideas. And then we have our process um, is online and virtual, and we have the students go through steps one through four are all content steps. And then, then there's, there's 10 steps and then there's um, content and polishes last and in between is structure. So we spend like five steps really, really honing that content. And they don't write a first draft until step five. So that's just kind of a basic overview. But the most important thing is answering this question. What is it that you want colleges to know about you? And that's a trait or a characteristic or multiple traits. So are you resilient? Are you funny? Are you hardworking? And I know sometimes students think that everybody has these traits, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you, you just focus on yourself and focus on what's important to you and what colleges want to know is what's important to you. So that's where we start. And then we take them all the way through the process with a coach guiding them. And we go through drafts and we go through after the first draft, we don't like just mark it up and send it back to them. We ask questions to help fill in the gaps and to make sure always that they're answering the prompt. So here's, this is key. Every effective essay has a theme and that theme will answer these two questions. What happened? Which would be, what's your story? And what happened in the story? And then why does it matter? And the why does it matter is critical because why does it matter is not, a, it's not about the thing. It's about that trait. So it would be, I am resilient. Why does it matter? Because I am resilient. What happened? I'm afraid of heights. And I was on this trip where I was doing something really great. And then I jumped off a 30 foot waterfall. And why does that matter? Because I'm resilient. And I was, I faced my fear and I just did it anyway. And I'm still kind of afraid, but I know that I can do anything. So that's, we take them through this process where we start with that. And we make sure before they write a first draft that there's a theme that's gonna work and help a student answer that prompt. So a lot of times students wanna start the essay with that idea that's been 
um, in their heads for like a year. Like people come up to kids and say, well, what do you, you should write about that in your college essay and you should write about that. And they're not even thinking about what colleges are asking and what the colleges want to know. And what the college wants want to know is what's important to you, the applicants, not what I want to read, but what do you want to tell me? This is your place to shine. This is your opportunity to share something meaningful. And our process helps you do that. And students don't always know what's meaningful to them. They just have the idea and we help them find the meaning in their story. We help them just pull it out and write it the way they would do it in their words and their voice. And we, what we teach them is to be their own writer, not to like do it for them. That's great. Yeah, I think that portion of writing for students kind of gets lost you know, like like me, I assumed it starts with brainstorming and then you write the draft and, you know, as you're writing, your thoughts kind of come out of, like, for me, I think the thoughts come out of my paper and then I realize after, okay, this is not the way I wanted my paper to go. But the process that you're explaining makes, you know, so much more sense to spend more time thinking about what specifically matters to you, what specifically you want to talk about, coming up right. with that outline beforehand and then later on into the process, going into the writing, because you can't just write a paper. Right. So, so Mackenzie, you, you just hit on that, like such an important key. The beginning, we focus so much on the beginning. If you do the hard part up front, the rest is so much easier. And then you can breathe and feel confident and calm. So along the way, our job is to help keep our students calm during a time in their lives where they're not feeling that way because there's so much pressure. And then this can add to it, but we try to make them feel as good as they should feel and to not think that they can't do this and to not just write a bunch of stuff and then fix it later. So right, if you take, it's almost like if you spend a little extra time up front doing the important part, it's a lot faster. So your question, let me make sure I answered it, was how long should it take? So I would guess in our process that common app essay would be about 10 to 15 hours. And we have a schedule that's a month long schedule. And most of the work on the essay takes place in a two week period. And we give bite sized chunks in, in the assignments. Like it's the instructions are small, and every step will take between 15 minutes to an hour. So you're never spending a whole weekend just writing one essay from top to bottom. It's just, that would be so hard and so stressful. And then at the end, you might not even have something usable. So it's yeah. a writing, yeah. So the magic is actually in the instructions that we give. Yeah, and I'm sure it changes, it variates between kids. You know, someone might need to take a little longer to think about their topic, to think about how this relates back to them, what they want to share at the school, the whole writing process. You know, that can probably vary between a student, like not everyone. One hour, one hour max, swear to God. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Right. No, I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that. So it, yeah. students are different. And of course, I've never, um, there's always an exception of someone who just, so our process for brainstorming and it's so good. Sometimes it's 15 minutes and sometimes it's a half an hour and the exception is an hour. That's the exception. So it does not take that long when you slow down up front and just follow the instructions and spend 15 minutes on each little task. And by the time you get to the brainstorm session, you have a pretty good idea of what you're going to talk about. And the students give us four or five ideas. And sometimes there's nothing there to work with. And sometimes there's a lot. But at the end of that brainstorm meeting, those students have an idea. Have a, you know, they know which question they're going to answer. They have an idea. And they have a theme. So they know exactly what traits they want to share. And they know basically what the story is they're going to tell. That would be so nice to have a timeline. 
and the schedule. I mean, we give you a schedule to get it done. And it's like, here, the schedule is, guys, here's your schedule. On this date, I'm going to do this, give you this. And then on this date, you're going to get it back to me. And this is how much time it takes. Yeah. And then and it I'm takes sure the angst. overthink it if they have too much time there. Uh huh. So we you know, don't then get... once you're overthinking it, you're not even <laughs> talking about the yeah. prompt anymore, like you said. Right. So, you know, like, like you don't, you're not that old. So if, I don't know if you can remember high school, but remember the assignment for English class that had three pages of, three pages of complete instructions for a three page paper, remember that? And you read it and you're like, ah, <laughs> right? So wouldn't it be nice if that teacher would have broken it down and said, oh, do this part and give it to me on Friday. And then I'll look at it and see if you're going in the right direction. And then give me this part on this date and bite size and like small, small pieces. Definitely release the stress from it all. You know, well, it, you're working but it works. Process, you know, you're heading in the right direction with it. It's like a um, science experiment. You know what you're going to do on Monday, and then you're going to wait to see what happens with your project on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, if it did this, you're going to go in this direction. If it did that, you're going to go in this direction until it's done. And that's what we do with our writing process. And writing is a process just like a science or math project process. It's, it's very laid out. And that's how everybody should learn writing through a process. So I agree, hundred percent. I, I can see. Wish that. I could go yeah. back to that English class. Oh, <laughs> no, you, you do not wish you could go back. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> okay, you had an, a couple other questions on that list. Yes. Yeah, so um, during the process, um, what strategies do you provide students that can help them employ that can help them with juggling those different essays or if they're applying with different applications? How do you help them juggle all of that? So we start with the common app essay, which and then we have a basic outline for a schedule that would take them over three months. Let's say you have four essays. We can give you a schedule for those four, not four essays, four schools. So say you're applying to Harvard, okay? Harvard, MIT, Cornell, and Stanford, four schools that very few people get in. And so we're gonna do the Common App essay first, and then we're gonna give you a schedule for four schools that'll take place over three months. And you're also gonna have deadlines. The difference, and we're gonna help you stay on track. So we have to be a little more flexible on the supplements, but we do, it's the same thing. And we try to do one school at a time. So we'll do a brainstorm meeting for one school, one week, and then the next week. And we're, we're flexible if there's, I mean, Stanford has like what, 14 essays. So you might not be able to get 14 done in one week, depending on what's going on in your life, but that's what we do. And sometimes after the Common App, we'll want you to pick a school that has a why this school essay. And then the students will look at all the essays and we parse every prompt the same. And we help the students find the overlapping essay so that there's only a certain number of types of essays so that you're not starting from scratch with every school. You can use this for this essay. I mean, you have to write them new. Like it's it's not common that you can just use it as is sometimes. But we help them by having a process, by having a plan to do it. We make a plan with the students based on what their three months looks like or based on the deadline that we have. And, um, you know, I worked with a student who was a fine had been trying to write it himself, was applying to Harvard early, and they contacted us late in the season, and he got six essays done in four weeks. But it was a plan and a schedule. So this is what you do on this day. This is what you do on this day. This is what you do on that day. So it, it can be done. Yeah, and I'm sure it can be stressful, but deadlines, you know, as scary as they can be sometimes, they're like one of the most helpful things, especially with writing. Well, you start at the end. Here's the deadline. 
And how are we gonna do what you need to do? And what we are really good at is taking a, making a plan with a schedule because students sometimes think that what they need is, I need to show them how brilliant I am with my poetry or my writing. And what they need to do is answer a question, do it effectively and have a plan and a schedule to get it done. And that's what they're missing is that plan and the schedule. And with that, you can do a lot. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's gonna be very helpful to a lot of kids. And especially knowing that when they, when they do come to you that you can help them with more than one essay. It's not like they're tied down to, you know, okay, am I gonna write this essay and then come back another time and have to help you? This one, like you're helping them all at once. Like you're making most a of our Most of our them. students, most of our students work on four schools. Okay. I mean, some of them just do one common app essay, but most of our students work on four schools. And so we schedule it up front so we can help them get it done. Okay. Wow. And I have one more question for you today. Okay. Um, and I think this is probably the juicy question that all the students um, want to hear. But what are admissions officers thinking when they read a college essay? What are they looking for that makes them say yes? Oh, they're looking at your entire, you don't want to hear this kids, but they are looking at your, they're looking at a lot more than your college essay. And right now during COVID, I've, I hear a lot that, oh my God, without test scores, the essay is much more important. And I say, it's in my best interest to say that's true. And it's not true. What's important is that the essays are critical and admissions people read them and all the years, and I was thinking about this today, I've been doing this for 11 years. And what admissions officers tell me they want has never changed. Whether you're applying to, at a certain level with the selective schools, it's always gonna be more important than at a school that's just looking, you know, like a, some of the public schools, it's not as important, but it's becoming more important because they have fewer things to pick from. But the essay, shows them a side of you they couldn't possibly know. It's just this opportunity. So Sean Felton is, is my friend and he's at Cornell, he's the director of admissions. And he always says this and I quote him continuously because this is so true. He says, I don't know what I want. You're writing an essay thinking, what does this person want? He wants you to give him something that is gonna make him want to not necessarily just love you, but it's gonna to want to take your whole application and say, I wanna know more about this person. And this person sounds great. And share that with somebody else in his office. He wants to read your essay and know something about you that he can't possibly know from the classes you took at school, from the fact that you have a title from an organization you worked at, if you're president of your student government and you tell this guy at Cornell that I'm president of student government and you write a whole essay about that, you're not sharing anything meaningful with him. He wants you to tell him why this was so important, but he doesn't know what he wants to read before he opens it up. And so sometimes students think that they can just game this, that if they know what the college admission person wants, they can just write that or they can get a book that says, here are some essays that got a kid into University of California. And the people at University of California have also read this book and they don't want you to look at that essay and copy it because that's, it's all out of context. You have to look at the entire application and actually to know what it is that made up the people inside the admissions office accept you. This helps give them context for who you are. This helps them see how you think. This helps them see how you write. This helps them see so much about you. And if your writing doesn't match your English test scores, <laughs> they know. So you just have to be true to yourself and just write something that's meaningful to you. And as simple as it sounds, answer that prompt. 
in a way that shares something meaningful about you. And I know I've said this ad nauseum, but that's really the secret is being genuine, being authentic, answering that question and not starting with what do they want me to tell them? So what they want is a story that's genuine, that you write yourself, that shares something meaningful, that answers the prompt and is reflective. And if you're not that insightful, you do not have to go that deep, but you have to be somewhat reflective and you have to focus on why you're telling them anything. So in life, right? Anybody who sees this is someone young who's thinking about their future. When you're asked a question in a job interview, you have to know why you're telling them something when you answer it. When your parent asks you why you came home late at night, <laughs> You better have a good reason for it and don't lie. It's the same thing. You always need to know why you're telling them something, why you're answering them. What is it they're asking and why? And then what is it you want to say to them and why? And yeah. there's no secret. There's no magical answer. There's no perfect topic because that perfect topic is in your head and you can't research it on the internet and you can't copy what someone else did and you can't just find some random template for writing it because a your perfect essay will emerge out of a process of writing it and nobody can copy your story so you don't have yeah. to worry about that. And I'm sure that big book of essays that got me into Brown or whatever school there's probably a hundred other kids reading that as well, taking the same essay, making trying to make it their own. And well, you know, that essay just can see that. They right, but tell. that essay didn't get that kid into Brown. It's just an essay written by some kid who got in. Maybe. We don't. How do we know? And it's all out of context. There's a lot of information out there that just piecemeal and out of context. So all you need to know is that they're asking you to do something and you need to do it. Um, they're giving you a question and your job is to answer it to the best of your ability in a reflective way that shares something meaningful about yourself. Focused. And you can't copy that ever. So that Costco essay people talk about, do you remember that essay? The girl wrote this, at, I, think she, I think she ended up at Stanford and it went it went viral. Everybody was talking about it. She was on all the TV shows. She wrote this essay about shopping with Costco with her mom and went through years from when she was two to when she was 16. And to be honest, it, you know, like, I don't know how anybody could remember anything about being age two. I don't know if it was good. I didn't think it was the best essay I wrote. It was just an essay about Costco. And so I'm guessing that the next year, a lot of kids wrote essays about Costco because this girl got into Stanford. Mm -hmm. I mean, how fun is that to have your essay go viral? However, <laughs> that is not what got her into school. And those essays in those books are not what got that kid in. And there's no template that you can throw your idea into and make it stand out. You have to do the work, there's no shortcuts here. Yeah. And I'm sure at this point, admissions officers can tell who generally wrote about themselves, who's copying from something else. I, I feel like at this point, they've read so many essays. Oh yeah. They, yeah. Can, they can tell. Yeah, so is it gonna hurt you? Maybe not, but is it gonna help you? Absolutely not. And the only way to help yourself is to take this seriously and do the work and spend time up front learning what the prompt is about, figuring out what you want colleges to know about you. And making sure that you know, what is it that I want colleges to know about me when they read this? What do they know? And what do I want them to know? And I know I make it sound really easy, but it's not as hard as people think. And it may not be as easy as I think it is. But you just have to reframe how you think about what it is. And then you can breathe and sleep better at night. Yeah, and having someone by like you guys, I'm sure by their side is very reassuring. I know I would have been so very funny. comfortable having somebody walk me through the process, show me a process. 
Well, when you go to grad school, you know where to go. <laughs> I'll call you up. <laughs> um, well, that's a wrap today. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kim. We'll leave a link to the WOW Writing Workshop in the description below. Feel free to check it out. We hope you all have a great day. Thank okay. you so much for having me.